Hi everyone, Stock Mo here. For those who don't know, if you haven't done, hit the like, hit the subscribe, because today I'm gonna to share with you one of the stocks that I bought $70,000 worth over the last two weeks, and we'll go over it. And of course, big moves out there in terms of the market, because Monday, it's gonna be interesting. I kinda of have a feeling of where it's gonna go, and I'm gonna go over that as well. There's a lot of information, and for everyone wondering, we're gonna take a look at two of the portfolios the YouTube portfolios from years past, and we're gonna see where they're at because I have been continuing to DCA into them. I just haven't brought them up here to show, but today we're gonna to do that. Now, before we get into it, make sure you join me over at the Patreon. Link down below and check this latest post. Major moves made, of course there were, but an option to boot. That's right, we threw an option out there. And like I said, for those who like to follow along, you can, the link's down below. Uh, the option, which is already out there, and I'm gonna talk about that a little bit today, see if it happens, if it doesn't. It's not like it was a huge option, but uh, nonetheless, I wanted to see how it would play out. Uh, we'll take a look at that. The other thing, make sure you get those free stocks from Moo Moo down below. Check this out. Now, <clears throat> for those that don't know, you put 100 bucks in, you get five free stocks, it'll be worth up to two grand a piece, but they're giving you a $100 cash reward now which if you buy a thousand dollars worth of stock they take a hundred dollars off the price so you get a hundred dollars for free which so in other words it makes sense just to do the thousand dollar deposit you get 15 stocks for free plus a hundred dollars off that thousand dollar purchase so it is one of the best deals easily that you can find out there and if you haven't done it take advantage of the weeble link down below any deposit a dollar more using my link up to 12 free shares of stock worth up to 30,600 so come on over and join me at the patreon for that and take advantage of those too. Now let's start, let's start with the VOO Weekly because if people don't realize, I've been telling you that one of the best ways you can invest, and this is by far, I've done videos on it, it's just to put money in the VOO, put it in weekly through the ups and downs, and you will make money in the long run. Now we started this at the highs back in 2022, 1, 3, 2022. Uh, and you can see right here, since then the markets are still down over 10% from that time, all right? So as everybody understands, the markets are still down 10%. If I put all my money in VOO back then, I'd still be down 10%. And you can see right here, we're up 6.41%, which is fantastic. And you can see quite a few things here. And we scroll down and you can see that these were all red for so long. Now the market's been coming back a little bit and you're seeing some of these flip over to green and you're getting a lot more green. So the dollar cost averaging, plus we've been getting paid dividends now. We are now up to $78 in dividends, $395 profit, and we made $474. And this is just putting $100 a week in. For those who do not know what this is, you can see $100 deposit roughly every single week. And we've been doing this and I told you I'd do this all the way up until I'm not on YouTube anymore. And so that's the goal. So right now we're up to $7,400 roughly that we put in, and we have a total now of $77.95. So we made $474. Uh, <clears throat> we'll see where it goes. Like I said, I'm gonna continue to do this and show you how you can grow $100 a week into some substantial gains. So once you get into a full-fledged bull cycle that lasts years and years and years, all the negative catalysts are gone. But for those who have been here, you remember one thing. I told you that that is a good way to do it. But the one that I thought would absolutely crush it, you guys know what this is. I said my Ethereum, my Crypto Weekly would be the one that I thought would be either first or last. And it'd probably be a combination. And so we take a look at this. And I've been putting $100 into this. We did sand one time here. and. Uh, I obviously did not do well, but I continue to put $100 into Ethereum. We're up to 4.229 Ethereum here, which is fantastic. And we continue to put the 100 in. Now, what do we got in here? $775 in profit and 10.48% up It is in first place. And look at this. If I put all my money in Ethereum on day one, we're down 50% from that period that was 1 3 2022 so <clears throat> a year and a half later it's still down 50 percent but if you've been dcaing in you are up 10.48 percent putting the same amount of money in every single week a hundred dollars or roughly a hundred dollars every single week now you're up to 8175 and on top of this 
you could stake your Ethereum and get that four point something percent return right now is what it's paying. And you would get even more money on this because if you have $8,000 worth of uh, Ethereum, that's 300 and something dollars in staking rewards that I could add in here. Now I do have it staked, but it uh, actually take that back. I do not have this one staked. I've been buying this on Robinhood. The Coinbase uh, share of my crypto, I have a whole crypto portfolio with over $200,000 worth of crypto. That is staked at, uh, over there to Coinbase. So that is getting the return. And that is up over $8,000 in staking rewards that I've been paid so far. So fantastic with that. All right, folks. So I wanted to give you that to start, but then I wanted to get into a few things. One, take a look at this. Take a look at Wharton Professor Jeremy Siegel. Now he is absolutely a genius. He comes in and he has a great amount of experience. He knows what he's talking about. And he's, he's not always right, but uh, for this one, he says, investors' hopes of a Fed pause are pushing stocks higher. He is very bullish and skipping a rate hike would lower the risk of recession. Doesn't mean we're not gonna have one. Fed even said that they are planning for one at the late end of this year. Now, what's Jeremy Siegel think? One of the brightest minds out there when it comes to the, to economy, to the economy and economics in general. You can see they're fueling the stock market rally. Halting interest rates now could lower the chances of recession. But he says this, Siegel also says U.S. stocks are unlikely to surge this year, despite the momentum from AI hype. Why? Because he doesn't want to sound negative, but the truth is, and this is it. I, I know people out there hate hearing this. We've had a fantastic run, and we got up above the 4250 for a day to, that I thought would be that ultimate resistance and now we see where we go from here. Do we run up there 44, 45, 4,600? I would be absolutely shocked if we did. I told you I thought the recession and the, the downturn in the markets would hit Q2 or Q3. We're still in Q2, folks. We're not even out of Q2 and everybody's like, where's this downturn and stuff? Remember, Q2 or Q3, the lagging effects that it takes for the rate hikes, it could take six months up to 18 months to fully kick in. He knows that. And these rate hikes were huge uh, months ago, a couple quarters ago, and he knows that. And so he says, I don't expect the second half of this year to be like we saw in the first half. Why? Because he knows all those rate hikes and the effects of them are gonna kick in in the last half of this year. I can see it as well. The leading economic indicators see it as well. You have the student loans coming back. So all these things are playing against a, not saying the market can't go higher. Of course it can. You can always say, oh, well, it could go higher. It could go lower, of course. Then you can come back and say, I was right. I said it would do this or that. Here's the thing. You got to sit there and look at the data you're given. Make the best educated uh, estimate of where you think things are going to go and then go with it. And that's what I do. And so at the end of the day, I agree with him. Then they asked him this, which I thought was a very telling of him of where he believes the market's gonna go without saying it. Cause everybody, you get attacked if you say, well, I think the market's probably gonna give some back. He says, ask whether they're gonna, stocks are gonna soar or slide. He said he didn't think the former was on the cards. So the former is soaring. The latter slide is in the cards most likely for the second half of the year. But he also did mention that we could continue uh, to see some through the summer. He didn't say into the fall. And we already said it. Q2, we know it gets up there. Could we see in the fall? And that's what the bond market is pricing. He sees that. So he believes that we could see continuation of some good news through the summer. But everybody who's watching this and the bond market is pricing in that this fall is going to be painful. And the Fed said, we expect a light recession coming in at the end of this year. That's fall in the winter. So folks, be prepared. I know everybody is enjoying it. I'm glad for everybody who has made a ton of cash. It's fantastic. But understand, it doesn't just go one direction. It goes both. It can go up and it can go down depending on what's happening. And right now, you're seeing a little bit of warning in a subtle way from Jeremy Siegel. And I definitely wanted to make sure people were aware of that. Now let's have a little bit of fun. I got a stock here that I've been loading up on. And I'm gonna to try to get over $100,000 worth of this one stock alone because I believe the long-term of this company is going to absolutely crush it because of the downfall of another company. And what am I talking about, folks? Here it is. Take a look. I've been loading up on ticker symbol TAP. This is TAP. 
and it's Molson Coors Beverage Company. And I'm gonna show you a little bit about this. Now, one, I believe that Budweiser, which we have right here, and they had a decent day on Friday. Everybody was up Friday. Friday was one of them days. Uh, but if you take a look at these two companies, it's a tale of two stories, uh, two cities, tale of two stories. But <clears throat> we got Molson, who I believe is going to benefit greatly from the downfall of Budweiser. So we know that Budweiser right now is losing market share and they are losing a substantial amount of market share. And I know some people out there, they believe it is coming back. I am not in that boat. I absolutely believe it is not coming back. I believe they have permanently lost a lot of customers. I go out and I can see and I talk to a lot of people and their attitudes towards Budweiser and generally a lot of their products have changed drastically and for a good amount of people, permanently. And I think that you're gonna see that. And yeah, I know they're all over the world and basically it only affects the US and a small batch of people. Well, that's a big percentage in terms of US sales that I think are now gonna to go to a competitor. And what competitor do I feel is going to be the one that benefits the most? Well, I just showed you. I think it's this company. Take a look at this five day. They're up 5.21. So we come over to Bud. How's Bud doing? This is ticker symbol BUD. If you disagree with me, you go all in Bud. You can go ahead and get into this one and think you're gonna rebound. But over the last five days, down 3.55. So I can see the whales are agreeing with me already. They're quietly picking up shares of Molson and I should say TAP, and they're, you're seeing more people exiting Anheuser because once these numbers come out for Q2, I am absolutely not gonna be surprised to see Anheuser come out and say, look, our sales did not rebound like we thought. It seems like it's taking longer. We're gonna have to continue to discount, which hits profit margins. And then on the other hand, we could say, well, how long has it been? Well, it's been a month, 13.88% down. Where's the whales been moving their money? Ah, so Molson's only down 1.68 and you see Anheuser 13.88. So you can see right now that Molson is outperforming by about 12 percentage points. Then we go to six months and it kind of takes it all into effect long term. And you can see Molson's up 17% and then Anheuser is down 7.74. So you see a difference of about 24 to 25% between them. And if you believe you're in the boat where you believe that Anheuser is way undervalued that they're gonna get this back well then you can go all in and have fun buy into that i am in the other category where i think the damage is going to be permanent for a lot of this and it's definitely a damage to the brand and some other things so we'll see where this goes i could be wrong but i'm putting my money where my mouth is i'm loading up now what do we get when we look at the experts now I'll show you this. The experts believe over the next 12 months we're gonna see a 3% downturn from TAP, but I do not. Look, we have one update over the last month, uh, we'll say this one right here, two actually, uh, and you can see that they both have it at around 74, 75, 15 to 17% upside, and they're both highly ranked in terms of analysts over in Wall Street. Now I believe that's gonna happen, and we'll see where it goes at that point, but I did wanna share that with everyone letting you know that I believe we're gonna see some good times in the near future. Now I did buy an option that I discussed earlier in this video and I told you I would talk about it and I will now. I ended up going with a call option on SQQQ, that's right, triple leverage with the call option. This is the highest risk I have ever done. I'm playing the data, I'm playing the technicals, I'm putting it all together and I'm not gonna be surprised to get bitten on this, but I ended up buying quite a few contracts on this, and what am I talking about? Well, if you come in, there's two things I was looking at. One, look how high we got above the Bollinger Band, and this is the chart over at Moomoo. You get this for free if you sign up on there. I would take advantage of this, but look, the Bollinger Band is right here between the blue and the uh, orange right here, and when you see that at 95% of all values of trading fall between that, or anytime you get above or below, it is severely overbought or severely oversold. We blew through the severely overbought, my friends. And so I think there's going to be a turnaround this week. 
but uh, so for me that usually is a, a sign that you'll see some profit taking and that's on a normal day all right so you don't even need another catalyst for me this would have been enough to do a short position just for the short term just for a few days until you see that come back to reality anytime you get up there near you usually have that you have that you have that now we blew through it and so we're gonna find out how this works but I can show you other times we got above it and you have down Get above it down so if you look at the pattern uh, you can see that anytime we get above it we come down so I was playing this for a day to see if we follow suit and we come down on Monday but that wasn't the only reason I did this because I bought about five thousand dollars a little under that worth of the option so it's not a huge gamble but it was a weak expiring option so you're gonna lose about 20% if it doesn't go your way right away so you got to be very careful that's why I said I was doing this for one day why why only one day Mo well the other thing is that we also know and for those and we'll look at the chart here that we have major action from the Treasury on Monday they are issuing a hundred and ten billion in treasuries and that means the auctions are Monday, the money's gonna flow from banks, it's gonna flow from equities. That's gonna be a whole liquidity crisis for some of these stocks and banks. And so when that happens, I expect that to be a negative catalyst just for the day on equities. So we got an overbought in the technicals. We got the fundamentals of a treasury out there putting 110 billion in treasuries out. And that money has to come from somewhere and it's from investors. So they'll pull their money out to take advantage of risk-free returns. And, and you know, it could be four or 5% risk-free. So yes, I expect to see a little uh, drain in the, the equities as well as, like I said, technically we are way overbought. So for a day, uh, for a day, I thought, you know what? I never do this. I never get into this swing trading and day trading stuff. But you know what? Today, it seems like everything and the FOMO is off the charts. Everybody's rolling in, they're running. And like I said, I'm not gonna be surprised if it doesn't go exactly like I think. But I'll tell you this, I definitely won't be surprised if it does go the way I think it's gonna go. So we'll see. If, it, if we have solid green on Monday, so be it. Mark it up to uh, a trial and error. If we have the the red, like I think, and I don't mean it's going to crash down and stuff, but it's going to be a red day. I should be able to make squeak out a small profit, and that was the goal. And I know some people wanted to see me do this once in a while. Let me know if you like the idea. What do you think? Am I wrong? Am I right? Um, <clears throat> I'm always interested in hearing what people think about some of these options plays. If you'd like to see more, come on over to the Patreon. Links down below. And of course, if you haven't done it. Make sure you get those free stocks from Moomoo Moo and they got that charting there. So click that link down below and get it from Weeble as well. I appreciate you stopping by. Let's get out there and make some money.